Hello, everyone. Welcome along to episode 11 of The Apprentice Angle. Look, I apologise straight away for not doing this last week or the week before. I've just been very, very busy. Last Friday, I was at the All Apprentice card at Goodwood, and I'll touch upon that a little bit later on. I've been writing articles for my local newspaper now, which many people have seen on social media. And I've just been very busy in life at the moment, so I've just not had the time to actually sit down physically and record an episode of The Apprentice Angle. But don't worry, we're back this week. And this week's episode is a... A filler in episode, really. We're going to catch up with everything that's happened over the last couple of weeks. And right at the, right at the very end, I'll be giving you my young apprentice jockey to follow at Royal Ascot next week. I can't wait for Royal Ascot. I'll be there next week as well. And it's a meeting for me that I always look forward to, particularly for the international flavour we get every year. And it promises this year to be no different. Of course, Nate Strip last year was fantastic in the King's Stand. I was a huge admirer of him before the race. And I was chuffed when he turned the King Stand to an absolute route. This year, we've got Cool and Gatter coming over for the King Stand. We've got Cannonball as well for Australia. Wesley Ward bringing a strong team over as well. A couple of Lady Aurelia offspring are on, in action this week, or next week, I should say, as well. I'm looking forward to seeing Wellington in the in the Platinum Jubilee race, which actually has been renamed the Queen's Jubilee uh, race, the sixth spell on Group 1 on Saturday. I've been a huge fan of him. Um, a, a, an avid Hong Kong racing fan. I got up every sort of weekend when there's a good bit of action on to keep an eye on things over there. And I think he's got a cracking chance in winning that six furlong sprint next Saturday. He's a fantastic course. And he's just been a shade and lucky that Lucky Sway Ness has been such a good sprinter in Hong Kong this season. Because prior to that, he was by far and away at least one of the best in the world. Still is, in my opinion. And I think his group one form in Hong Kong is the strongest in the race. And I think he's got a cracking chance of winning that six furlong group one sprint next Saturday anyway. But, however, we're here to talk about the Apprentice Joggies, of course, which is why this show's even the thing. And um, before I delve, uh, I take, take a bit more of a deep dive into the show, I just want to thank everyone for the uh, support over the last week or so of the Apprentice coverage. Look, at the start of the season, this was only an idea that was made at a cold afternoon on Winter Million Saturday at Lingfield on your weather. And to be brutally honest, I never, ever felt anybody would take so much of an interest in this. But the, the support, the traction, the engagement has really sort of taken off now as we get into the height of the flat season. And I thank everyone who's watched, who's commented on Twitter, who's liked, who's subscribed to the channel as well over the last couple of months since we launched this in March. It's been a, a real good start to the season for the young jockeys. It's something I'm extremely passionate about to our young talent within racing. And I'm very keen to push it. I do lots of interviews on track with the jockeys. We've had some good ones over the last couple of weeks too. And I'm just in a good place with it. And the apprentice jockeys ranks for me have not been as strong as they have been this year. Going into this season, it's always going to be a vintage year for me. I felt we had some real strong talent. Strength in depth was really good too. And it's just been great to tell the story over the course of this season. It's only going to get better now as we really get going into the flat season, as I just said recently as well. And I can't wait to sort of showcase more and more by the time we get to Champions Day in October. I hope to have had a very wealthy portfolio of apprentice work to look back on and be very proud of, really, to be honest. Um, anyway, as I, said, as I said right at the top of the episode, this episode basically is a filler in episode. So what we're going to do is we're going to reflect upon the last couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to give the championship standings to the apprentice jockeys. And also touch upon the Go Racing in Yorkshire's Future Star Series too, which has been rolling along quite nicely over the course of the season as well. And we go into round five up next as well. It's been actually going really quite well for the young jockeys as well. But anyway, kicking things off, Apprentice Jockeys Championship Roundup. Benoit de la Soye currently tops the table with 14 winners at the moment, had a good start to his season and was seen to very good effect last week at Goodwood as well. Harry Davis, the Jockey Challenge champion from last Friday, comes in at number two here with 11 winners to his name, operating at a 13% strike rate from 82 rides. Benoit himself operating at a 15% strike rate from 91 rides. Billy Lock name, Fresh Machepsto double today, comes in at number three and third with 10 winners from 119 rides, operating at an 8% strike rate. But his, his wins, or sorry, I should say his rides to wins ratio is significantly greater than the top two at the top of the championship. It's getting far more rides at the moment, and you can kind of already see why. He's racing post, young poster boy at the moment, and everyone seems to want to get him on their horses while he's still got his £3 claim. Uh, Mark Gwynn, based up in North, with David O'Mara is doing very well at the moment too. Currently sits in fourth with nine winners from 41 rides, operating himself at a 22% strike rate. So Mark's doing very well at the moment too. And Freddie Larson as well, fresh from a double at Yarmouth yesterday, comes in at fifth. With seven wins from 25 rides, operating at a very healthy 28% strike rate. Of course, Freddie himself is attached to the Ross Burkett agency at the moment. And we've mentioned Ross many a time on this on this show. He's very good with his, with his young team of apprentice jockeys he's got at the moment. And Frederick Larson himself is really uh, benefiting and reaping from some good rewards there as well. Looking further down the list, anyway... We've also got Mia Nichols coming in at number seven, at seventh, I should say. She had a nice one at Newbury yesterday. Johnny Peets uh, in sixth at the moment, too, with seven winners from 40, from 51 rides, operating at a 14% strike rate, too. So Johnny's having a good season himself, and Laura Pearson's in at eighth. 
Taylor Fisher at ninth for the good double at Chepstow the other, other day as well. And also coming at number 10 is Ollie Stammers with five wins from 39 rides, operating at a 13% strike rate. So that's your basic roundup for the Apprentice Jockeys Championship, guys. And looking ahead to the Future Stars Go Racing in Yorkshire Future Stars Series, rounding that up at the moment, Connor Planis is out in front by a significantly uh, nine-point gap at the moment. He tops the champion, the top, the, 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 I should say, tops the uh, the leaderboard there with thirty-six points at the moment. He's going very strong there and looks to be a looks to be in pole position, pole position, I should say, to win that series. In second place is Ellie May Crouch, she's having a very good start to her season as well. She's currently sitting second with twenty-seven points, based with Ivan Vitardo. had a nice couple of winners so far this season, and he's really getting the ball rolling into a seven-pound claim. In third place, we've got Christian Howarth on 24 points. So, a good start to the season as well. Won an early round, or I should say a couple of early rounds up at Pontefract for Ruth Carr of this series. So, he's starting off his season really well and is now still into his £3 claim. Currently kind of sitting in fourth, we've got Sean Bowen at the moment. He's come over from Ireland, won uh, the third instalment of the Future Stars series at Weatherby during the week of all team endeavour for Ian Williams and Diva Racing. He just got up on the top of the line as well. It was a really good ride by Sean. He's come over from Ireland now. Very tidy, young, strong jockey as well. He had a good start to his season over in Ireland. He's come over now to ride over here as well. Had a couple of rides since and has got his first winner now off the mark over in England as well, which is great to see. Still claiming £7, but very good value for his £7. Mark Quinn is currently sitting in fifth. We've mentioned him in terms of the Apprentice Jockeys Championship. He's got 15 points. Sean Bowen's got 18 points in fourth. Molly Gunn was just touched off on um, during the week at Weatherby by Sean Bowen, currently sits in sixth with 12 points. Aidan Brooks is in seventh with 11 points. Erica Parkinson, based with Mick Appleby's in eighth with nine points. Johnny Peets in ninth with eight points. Rose Dawes, Joe Levy and William Pyle all occupy joint 10th place with six points each. Luke Catton in th uh, is in 13th. Joint 13th with Sam Fielden as well with three points and also Alex Fielding as well. So it's um, all starting to take shape now in the apprentice world. All the championships, all the series are all starting to develop now. We've got our clear-cut leaders are chasing packs too. And it's great to see, really. I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying showcasing this over the course of the season. And hopefully by October, as I said before, we'll have some good portfolio of work to build up. But before I depart, guys, I'll give you my one jockey to follow for all Ascot. I've got to be quick because it's boiling hot in my room as I'm recording this. Um, my, my young jockey to follow basically is Harry Davis, this Ascot. Uh, I think he's got a cracking chance of riding his first Ascot winner. He came very close to riding his first winner at the Royal Meeting last year when he just got touched off a ball Nymphadora by Hayley Turner and Latin Lover in one of the big handicaps last year. And Nymphadora herself turned out to be a very nice sprinter off the back of that. She won at Chester in Chester main meeting last month. And I think Harry's going to have a very strong book of rides. Sheer Rocks looks to be one of his horses to look forward to this week after winning so well on Derby Day as well. He could be one of Harry's biggest chances of first Royal Ascot winner this week coming up. But he's still got his £3 claim. The aim was for the £3 claim to go at Royal Ascot. It's not going to go at Royal Ascot, but there could be significant damage done to that £3 claim. Positive damage too. And for me, my young jockey to follow this week, at the upcoming week at Royal Ascot, is Harry Davis. He's one to watch. Very much fantastic value for his £3 claim. Had a good start to his season. Currently sits second in the Apprentice Jockeys Championship. And I think this could be a very big week for both him and his boss, Andrew Borden, with the likes of Coltrane and Caldean to come during the week as well. So that was episode 11, guys, of The Apprentice Angle. Hit the thumbs up, the like button if you've enjoyed. Subscribe to channel two if you're new. And I'll see you all next week for a Royal Ascot Roundup week's roundup as well in episode 12 of The Apprentice Angle. Take care, guys, and see you all next week.